Hi, John here. In this lesson, we're going to look at the two-stroke engine. We're going to have a look at some of its main components. Then we're going to look at how it functions. We'll look at some of its applications. And then finally, we'll look at some of the advantages and disadvantages with this type of engine. So here we have our 3D model, much the same as before, although this time it's interactive. And in order to do this video properly, I think the first thing we need to do is quickly go through some of the main components. Let's start at the top. We can see we have a spark plug. Spark plug is used for igniting the air fuel mixture within the engine, which we're gonna to get to in a moment. We've also got a combustion space. That's this area here. We've got a port on the side. You can see the black arrow exiting. That is our exhaust port. We've got a piston. That is this whole section here. And then on the left hand side, we've got another port. Let's just uncover it. You can see now where the orange and blue arrow is. That is gonna be our transfer port. You can see it's coming all the way up here. And finally on the right, we've got our intake port section here. And if we go down, finally we've got the rest of the engine, which sits within the crankcase, which is within this red barrier. We've got the crank web, and we've also got the crank shaft, which we can see in the back here, where it runs all the way along, all the way through to the end load. So that is our two stroke engine. Let's zoom out again so we can have a proper look at the engine and we'll work through now how it functions. So I think the first thing we wanna do is follow the air fuel mixture. We're gonna go right back to the start. We can see that the air fuel mixture starts here and it comes in through this port. It's traveling left and it's going into the space below the piston. You can see the piston at the top of the screen. And we can see that as the piston comes down, it's gonna compress that air fuel mixture. So it's come down, the air fuel mixture which had traveled in, it was happily just sitting in the crankcase, filling up this whole space. But now, because the piston has traveled downwards, it's compressing that air fuel mixture and the pressure within the crankcase is increasing. Let's push play and watch it a bit further. What's happened now is that the air fuel mixture inlet or the intake port has been closed off by the piston. So we're not gonna get any more air fuel mixture traveling in this way. The fuel, by the way, is gonna be petrol or gasoline. Gasoline is what it's referred to in the States and other places like that. Whereas in the UK, we tend to refer it more to as petrol. So this intake port is now totally closed, but what's happened is as the piston has moved down and compressed the air fuel mixture here, it has forced the air fuel mixture out this way through the transfer port and the piston has uncovered the transfer port and the air fuel mixture has been allowed to travel in to the cylinder liner. If we push play again, can see now it's flowing quite freely into the cylinder liner. The piston looks like it's now reached bottom dead center. That's the lowest point of its linear transit. So bottom dead center would be about here and top dead center would be about here. And now because it's reached bottom dead center, it's time for the piston to move back up again. Notice the piston's moving up and down linearly. And down here, we've got something called rotational or angular motion. It's rotating in a circular direction, whereas the piston is linear. So let's watch the piston move upwards. The piston has now closed off the inlet to the transfer port. So we're not gonna get any more flow coming into the cylinder liner. Let's go over here, what's happening on this side. We've got another port that's open, the exhaust port. We're gonna see that that is now also closed. So we've got all of these top two ports closed, only the bottom one is open. And what is happening now, this is where it gets really interesting. That air fuel mixture is gonna be compressed 
and the pressure is going to increase drastically and so is the temperature. So the pressure and temperature within this space is going to increase. The volume is going to decrease because there's simply less space. Let's let the piston travel up and about this point here, just before it gets to top dead center or the top of its travel, we are going to get a controlled explosion. Let's just zoom in. We can see here, in fact, we can actually see the little spark that has been created by the spark plug. This piece here is called the central electrode and we're charging this with high voltage. At some point, the electricity or the pieces here, the central electrode and the piece below it, they're going to be so charged that the air is going to become ionized and we're going to get a spark that jumps across the gap. This spark is quite hot and it has more than enough energy to light that hot, highly pressurized fuel air mixture. When the spark occurs, we're going to get a controlled explosion. So let's have a zoom out now. You can see a controlled explosion. That controlled explosion is going to force the piston down. Notice the piston's gone back down linearly. And we've essentially then just had our power stroke. So we've got power from that fuel mixture because by having an explosion within this space, we can then harness the energy that was created by that explosion. And when we harness that energy, what it essentially means is we're going to use the energy to push the piston downwards and eventually we'll turn it into rotary motion. But notice that on the right hand side, the stroke itself or its movement downwards is very short. The exhaust gas port is already opening. You can see the gap here. Just let it play a bit further. The exhaust gas port is now fully open. So we've extracted our useful work. And now the fuel air mixture, which was originally used to create the explosion, is nothing more than exhaust gas. Now we want to repeat this process many, many times as quickly as possible. The reason we want to do that is because the faster we can do it, the more power we can generate and the more useful work we can get done. So in order to do that, we've got to get rid of that exhaust gas quickly. And that's why we uncover the exhaust port first and we let the exhaust gas just escape. If we let the piston continue down, or in fact, if we travel down a little bit further, we can see that the original air fuel mixture intake on the right hand side is almost closed. There is only a small gap around here and it is now closed and we are going through the same process again. The piston is going to move downwards, it's going to compress the air fuel mixture in the crankcase, it's going to force the air fuel mixture out through the transfer port, it's going to go into the cylinder liner and we're going to repeat that whole process again. So let's watch the animation and we'll do a quick, very quick recap. So down here, air and fuel into the cylinder space, close the transfer port, close the exhaust port, increase the pressure and temperature, ignite the fuel air mixture, get a controlled explosion, get our power stroke up to this point now, zoom in slightly. Open the exhaust port, get rid of our waste gas, recharge the cylinder, and repeat. Now, this is actually what they refer to as a intake compression power exhaust cycle. This means we are letting air and fuel into the cylinder space. That would be our intake compression because we're compressing the air fuel mixture, power because we're extracting the power exhaust because we're then exhausting the waste gases and then repeat. If you can't remember that, just think of suck, squeeze, bang, blow. Suck, squeeze, bang, blow. That's all the engine is doing. So let's go through it again. Right, squeeze, bang, blow, suck on the left hand side and traveling upwards, squeeze, bang, back down, blow. Suck, squeeze, bang, blow. In fact, let's speed it up a bit. We can actually have a look at it. There we go. So now it's really getting going. And this is essentially what is gonna happen in your two-stroke engine, except it's gonna be happening thousands of times a minute. 
Let's go back to our nice graphic because I think that one shows better what's happening. So again, here we go. So we can see the suction, left-hand side, squeeze, compression, bang, blow, suck, squeeze, bang, blow, etc., etc. I think you've understood that now. It's quite nice with this animation because we get the nice explosion at the top. And there we go, all the way through the cycle over and over again. So let's now have a look at some of the applications of this type of engine. Two-stroke engines are generally used only for small applications. When I talk about small applications, I mean things like motorbikes or perhaps an outboard engine for a motorboat or perhaps a lawnmower. So relatively small applications. There is one exception. You will see this type of engine used for very, very large merchant navy vessels. What I mean here is ships, container ships, oil tankers, all these huge ships, they will use two-stroke engines. The advantages with a two-stroke engine are that there are very few parts. Its design is very simple and it has a very high power to weight ratio. But the disadvantage with two-stroke engines is simply that they are not very efficient. If we go back to our animation now, we can see that as the piston is coming up, we're gonna get the explosion and almost immediately, or within a very short space of time, we have to open the exhaust port. So we can only extract so much energy, in fact, very little, that is our power stroke. If we can make the power stroke longer, we can extract more energy. But in a two stroke, that isn't really possible because we need to get the exhaust gases out quickly again. And to make this even worse, when we open up the transfer port, we're even gonna waste the air fuel mixture. So it's coming in, it's gonna fill up the space here, but we want to fill it up as much as possible. Unfortunately, that means that we're going to get some of that air fuel mixture going back out the exhaust port. Not much, but it is going to go out and this gives us another drop in efficiency. There's no point sending all the air and a little bit of fuel there if it's just going to rush out the exhaust port without doing any useful work. So that's the big disadvantage with two stroke engines. I hope you enjoyed this video of how a two-stroke engine works. If you did, please do share or like it on social media. It really does help me out. If you want to learn more about combustion engines, check out the link in the video description area and there you'll find a link to one of my courses. And if you click on that link, you'll get the course for a special discount price. Thanks very much for your time.